or scary than this. A DIY cruise missile built in the backyard. To prove a point, Tokoroa inventor, engineer and computer whiz Bruce Simpson did just that and told the world about it via the internet. Not surprisingly, Bruce's do-it-yourself rocket made world headlines, attracting attention from all the wrong places. Since then, Bruce's story has assumed epic proportions. He's in trouble, not for building his rocket, but for unpaid taxes. And Bruce believes he's the victim of a conspiracy. We're heading for a secret location. The secret because, well, let's just say it involves a rogue cruise missile. And this is all we're going to see now, but obviously I know where it is now. But once it's going to be passing it on to somebody, it will pass it on to someone else so that I can honestly say with my hand on my heart that I don't know where it is. Bruce Simpson never meant to cause an international incident. Never meant to spark a whole new front in the global war on terror. But that's pretty much how things have turned out. The price of freedom is vigilance. And, I mean, who would believe that someone could build a cruise missile or any other kind of uh, weapon like that in their own garage unless someone goes out and actually demonstrates the fact to the public? A do-it-yourself, autonomous, self-guiding, air-breathing prototype cruise missile. So this is it. This is it. This is the second cruise missile. Capable of carrying a 10 kg payload. It's hidden somewhere outside of Tokoro. Things like the GPS you can get from uh, any number of electronic outlets. So you're easily going to build one of these for less than five bucks. Indeed, there's change left in the budget. But Bruce Simpson is no terrorist. He says he just wants to wake the world up to the fact that anyone can build one of these and we all should be worried. Well, actually, I don't want a cruise missile at all. The whole thing is an exercise and a proof of concept. I mean, I have no application for a cruise missile. I don't know any unfriendly nations I'd like to deal a deathly blow to. But at home and abroad, there are those who take a dim view of backyard inventors building GPS-guided missiles for less than $5,000 a piece. I think his so-called justification is very dubious. He is, in effect, spreading technology to make it easier for terrorists and others to manufacture cruise missiles. It's not a good idea. Richard Spear, former U.S. Defense Department official, helped create America's missile technology control regime. A regime specifically designed to stop tactical weapons falling into the wrong hands. Cruise missiles are one of the most effective ways to deliver biological agents. They are about ten times as effective as ballistic missiles in this role. They are very dangerous. Had Bruce Simpson not felt compelled to share his missile technology with the world on his website, then the world wouldn't have got to hear of it. But he did. And the response? I received probably in excess of 4,000 emails within a month. And there was one from an Iranian aerospace and missile company. Um, it left me pretty gobsmacked. What do you think they wanted? Well, they wanted to pay good money to access my technology. And what did you stand to make out of a deal like that? Well, they offered me 100,000 US. But Bruce thought he'd best make sure that selling missile technology to Iran was legit. So I contacted the trade and industry by phone. Uh, the girl I spoke to said, well, we'll have to get back to you. And sure enough, a couple of days later, she rang back, told me there's no problems. That's the Islamic Republic of Iran, of course, a major sponsor of international terrorism, according to George W. Bush. And our people at the ministry were giving Bruce's jet the thumbs up. No problem with sending your technology to Iran, which has been listed by the Americans as a central part of the axis of evil. Exactly. I, I reiterated the fact that this, could, this had military application. And she said, no, still no problem. You can go ahead with that if you want to. So, so he got in touch 
with the SIS. The Security Intelligence Service. They were on to him quick smart, knew exactly where to find Bruce, even without an address. And how did they introduce themselves? Well, the, the chap gave me his card, and um, which, interestingly enough, just has his name and New Zealand government printed on it. He, he again reiterated that he didn't think it would be a sensible move to export military technology to Iran. Attracting attention is not new to Bruce. In the early days of the internet, he launched what would become the world's biggest net-based independent news service out of a broom cupboard. It featured on CNN. But one of the busiest news providers on the web these days turns out to be a one-man operation based way out in the New Zealand countryside. In 1998, he says he turned down a million-dollar offer for it from an American company, selling it instead to a New Zealand outfit for 200000 just to keep it here. Now where's the money? Not exactly good business. No, but I, I'm not a money person. I like to think of the bigger picture. And this is how he spent a chunk of the proceeds on developing jet technology. The X-Jet, as he calls it. And this is the afterburner here, Bruce, I take it. What sort of power does this unit produce? It produces around about, well, in this configuration, around about 65, 70 pounds of thrust. A pulse jet. Technically, no moving parts. Deadly simple. In fact, potentially downright deadly. It's not exactly what you call adequate stopping power, Bruce. Well, no, but the, the whole thing is designed to go fast, not to slow down and stop. I, I use the foot brake there when it works, and if it doesn't work, I just rub my shoe against the, uh, the front wheel. That does a pretty good job. You have to prepare for this. Mind the back blast. And by the way, that's your basic leaf blower firing the thing up. 135 screaming decimals. A mobile Roman camp, complete with onboard barbecue gas bottle, capable of speeds of up to 100 k's an hour. 